It's another math day with teacher Jenny. Join me in here for another topic on solving rational inequalities. And again, we're going to talk about different pattern as what I have um, showed on my previous videos on solving rational inequalities. Now on this pattern, you will be seeing single term on the left side, but not a zero on the right side. So to give you the first example, here we have 3x minus 2 over x plus 4 greater than 2. So how to solve this inequality is for you to um, stick to the rule that your left side must be a single term and the right side must be 0. So moving on, we wanted to move our 2 out from the right side so that we can have a 0 on the right side. So moving that on the left side, that means... We have here, let me change my ink, okay. So we have here 3x minus 2 over x plus 4 minus 2. And that will be greater than 0. So as you can see there, your right side is 0, but the left side contains not a single term. So if that is the case, then you are going to, again, make it into a single term. How do we make it into a single term? Now notice your other term there is in terms of fraction and the other one is a whole number. And we must follow the rule in adding fraction that it must be that their denominators are the same. So if you have there a whole number together with that fraction, all you have to do is to multiply that whole number by the denominator of that fraction. So that would simply mean that we have 3x minus 2 over x plus 4 minus 2. And then we are multiplying this by the denominator of your x plus 4. And we are also dividing that at the same time by x plus 4. Why? The reason behind that is we do not want to change the given in there. That is why we are multiplying number 1 to your 2 in there. So number 1, that would simply mean that we have there x plus 4 over x plus 4. You notice they are the same number. Dividing those two things would result to 1. That means to say we're not changing anything. Or you can simply uh, do, look for the LCD and then have it as their common denominator and then you do the process in transforming them into similar denominator. Okay, so moving in, we have 3x minus 2 over x plus 4. Negative 2 distributed on the numerator, that becomes negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Or oh, let us try to um, have it later distributing the negativity in there. So let me just enclose that one in a parenthesis so that later on, once we do our computation, you will not be confused. So we have here 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 4, that will be positive 8. And then we we'll simply copy there our denominator, which is x plus 4. And that will be greater than 0. Notice they have the same denominators, so we can now write them in one single term. That is our aim, to express the left side in a single term. So since they have the same denominator already, so we can now write it as a single term with the denominator x plus 4. And then we copy 3x minus 2. And then this is minus, so everything else will change on its sign. So that means we have negative 2x, negative 8, and there you go. And we have greater than 0. Now next, we are going to simplify our numerator. We have combining 3x and 2x. We have that 3x minus 2x is x. Negative 2 minus 8, that becomes negative 10 or minus 10. And then we still have x plus 4. And that will be greater than 0. So we are down with our 
single term on the left side and a zero on the right side in an inequality. So that means to say we are now ready to do the second step in there in which we will be equating our numerator and denominator to zero. So x minus 10 equal to zero. That's for the numerator. So our x will be equal to 10. This is one of our critical number or the meaningful number in there that we are going to use later on. So let's go for the denominator x plus 4, equating that to 0, we have x equal to negative 4. But since this is found on the denominator, we do not wish to have that value because that makes our denominator 0 and the entire thing will become an undefined. That's a no-no. Okay, so there you go with your critical numbers or meaningful numbers, the 10 and negative 4. So that means we are now ready to plot that in on our number line. Considering our critical numbers, x equal to 10 and x must not be equal to negative 4. Okay, so those are the critical numbers. So plugging in, let me just assume the number in here. I know you might be thinking, why am I doing this one? Because I am going to show or to utilize the spaces in between them in my computation for the testing of your um, regions, different regions as to what region is our solution belonging to. So this will be my critical, I mean my boundary. And also with that one. So I'm dividing my number line into regions. We have region 1, region 2, and then we have region 3. So testing that out, before that, we consider this one. Now for the numerator value, which is 10, we have the original symbol of our problem as greater than without the symbol of equal. That means to say we are going to have the, the positive 10 as the non-shaded or an open interval in there. So here you go with negative 4. Negative 4 belongs to your denominator. That will always be a hollow or unshaded. So moving on to testing your um, region. So let's start with region 1. We know that the numbers here are negative. We start off with negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and so on. So you are really free to pick any number. So let me just pick on negative 6 and utilizing my newfound inequality because if I'm going, to, is it is really okay if you are using the original inequality there, that's still good. But later on, you will, you will find it troublesome if you are comparing it with other numbers. So for good comparison or for easy comparison, it might be best if I'm going to do my newfound inequality here in which I have x minus 10 over x plus 4. That will be greater than 0 because right from there, we would really spot right away if this left side is negative, that means to say it's less than zero. If that left side is positive, that means to say it's greater than zero. So that is easier for you to compare. So moving on, we can now plug in our um, chosen value of your x. So we have negative 6 minus 10 over negative 6 plus 4. Will that be greater than zero? So negative 6 minus 10, that will be negative 16. Negative 6 plus 4, that will be negative 2. Notice we have um, negative and negative, that becomes positive. So positive are indeed greater than 0. So that means our region 1 is acceptable. So let's go to region 2, everybody. Let's try to pick on numbers in between. We can choose negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until you're 10. So let me just choose on my favorite one, the x equal to 0, because this gives me a lesser work to do. So if my x is 0, I have here x minus 10. I will be replacing my x as 0 minus 10 over x plus 4. My x now becomes 0 plus 4. Will that be greater than 0? 
So 0 minus 10, it's negative 10. 0 plus 4, that's positive 4. And again, that's negative over positive. That gives off negative answer. And indeed, that is not true for that one. So this is now out. Now we go to region 3. For region 3, let me just choose on x equal to 12. Plugging that in on your inequality there, we have x minus 10. x now will have 12 minus 10. And then x plus 4 there, x will have 12. So we have 12 plus 4. Will that be greater than 0? So 12 minus 10 is 2. 12 plus 4 is 16. So as you can see, we've got positive number in there. So that means this is in the true. And we are accepting our region 3 as part of our solution. So the solution here is region 1 and 3. So putting them together, we can now write our solution as a boundary of your region 1. We've started with negative 4 until negative infinity. So we have negative infinity here. That's always with parentheses. And negative 4 is a hollow. So we have parentheses in there. And we must write the U symbol for union because we are collecting the values on your region 3 because 3 is part of the solution. So boundary is starting with 10 going towards positive infinity. So we have 10 here and 10 is hollow. So we have parentheses going towards positive infinity with a parenthesis. So there you go with the solution in there. And I hope this is really clear on your part. Now, I'll be posting another video with different patterns. So you might as well stay tuned and look for it here in my channel. Again, this is your teacher, Jenny, signing off. Thank you and have a nice day.